Okay, much like we discussed for business process models with class diagrams, there are tips to help you perform this task efficiently, do it effectively, etc. So these would be called the best practices. Business loves to have best practices for all kinds of different activities. And in class diagrams, the first one is you want to have some common terminology. And this is going to vary depending on the organization you have. So you want common terminology for class names. You may have standard abbreviations. You may have an approach for separating words in a multi-word class name or attribute name. You could use an underscore, they could use a dash, they could use a combination of upper and lowercase lettering with the uppercase starting a new word, lowercase for the rest of the word, etc. So it's important to know how the organization works and stay standardized. So using this common terminology helps clarify things and make sure people across the organization understand what's in various diagrams. You should only use associations, links between classes, When you have a clear business reason, as with any type of model, you want to keep the model as simple as possible. So you don't want to build relationships that aren't absolutely necessary for the business process of interest. Now, where possible, you want to avoid crossing lines. And that's more of a readability thing. And sometimes this might require a, dra a couple drafts before you can uh, get that taken care of. And sometimes you may not be able to avoid it, uh, in which case, you know, you can take a number of different approaches to indicate which line goes where. Class rectangles. should have a consistent size. This is where diagramming software can come in real handy. You basically create one class object, rectangle, and then you just copy and paste it throughout your diagram wherever you need it. Avoid association lines. that are too close together. Again, this is a mainly a readability issue. You want to make sure that it's very clear which association line goes from one class to another. And you'll see in some busy diagrams that can be somewhat difficult to accomplish, but it's still a, a best practice that we want to strive for. We can use the KISS approach here keep as simple as possible. While still fully describing what it is you're trying to describe. Next, job number one is accuracy. Job number two appearance. So focus on getting it right first and then look to clean it up and figure out how to make it uh, more readable. You always want to consider the audience uh, when you document something, whether you write it down 
it's nothing but written documentation or whether it's a diagram. Consider the audience and how you can communicate, how they can read and pick up on what it is you're trying to communicate. And finally, use notes to clarify complex rules or situations. So these are good guidelines to follow for any kind of diagramming you're going to do and you know some of them apply to any kind of business communication that you want to uh, prepare. So hopefully these will help you as you start to practice with UML class diagrams.